Solaris, explained and analyzed. Andrei Tarkovsky released arguably his most celebrated work, Solaris, in 1972. The film is a meditative piece that explores many themes, not least of which is what it means to be human. Synopsis At the centre of the film is our stern and inscrutable protagonist, Chris Kelvin, who is bound for the oceanic planet of Solaris. His mission as a trained psychologist is to investigate why the skeleton crew of three on the space station orbiting Solaris are sending nonsensical messages back to Earth. The powers that be are growing increasingly frustrated with their inability to decipher anything meaningful about the planet, and Earth's study of Solaris may ultimately be terminated based on Chris's findings. The Solaris ocean seems to be alive and appears to be attempting to communicate with the cosmonauts exploring the planet. However, the alienness on both sides prevents them from being able to bridge the gap. Before Chris bids goodbye to his home planet, he spends some time with his elderly father, and it's clear that the pair have an emotionally distant relationship. The absence of Chris's mother looms large. Her death impacted father and son deeply. Burton, an ex-cosmonaut and an old friend of Chris's father, visits them in order to tell Chris of his own strange experience on Solaris. When there, he encountered a four-metre-tall, glistening naked child emerging from the ocean. Burton's experience was deemed a hallucination by so-called experts back on Earth, and Chris too dismisses Burton's tale, much to Burton's dismay and anger. After Burton storms off, Chris is berated by his father for his abrasiveness. Later, Chris burns his earthly possessions in a symbolic ending of what was his life on Earth. His father and aunt watch on, knowing that they are unlikely to see Chris again. When Chris arrives on the space station, no one is there to greet him and everything is in disarray. He tracks down a Dr. Snout, who is nervous and evasive. Chris learns that his friend, Dr. Gibarian, who was on the mission with Dr. Snout and a Dr. Sartorius, has committed suicide. Chris also becomes aware of beings that are present on the space station, entities other than himself, and the doctors. He comes across a rambling suicide video message left for him by Gibarian. Something has happened on the space station, something that Gibarian could not deal with and which ultimately caused him to kill himself. A tired Chris retires to his room to get some sleep and when he wakes up, he is shocked to find himself in the presence of his late wife Hari. Terrified, Chris tricks her into entering a rocket and then he launches her into outer space. Hari's screams are audible as she realises what is happening. But this is not the end of Hari and Chris and she reappears in his room once again and this time Chris calmly accepts her. The pair fall asleep in a tender embrace. Hari is a creation of Solaris. The ocean has delved deep into Chris's mind and recreated his late wife from his memories. When Hari wakes up from her slumber, she finds that Chris has left her alone and in a panic, she breaks down the metal door of their room, attempting to reach him. She can't bear to be alone. She cannot exist without him. Chris comes to her rescue and she is bloodied and injured from trying to escape. But before he can tend to her wounds, her injuries spontaneously heal by themselves. Sartorius theorizes that the guests Solaris is sending their way are created from stable neutrino systems and that it might be possible to destroy them using a device known as the Annihilator. Chris emphatically bans anyone from harming Hari. He has fallen back in love with his ex-wife and will not be parted from her. Snout proposes beaming Chris's brainwave patterns into the ocean in hopes that it will understand that they do not want these guests from appearing on the station. Solaris is attempting to communicate with them via these visitors, but it is not effective and the inhabitants of the spaceship do not want these disturbing apparitions. We learn that Chris and his ex-wife Hari had a troubled relationship back on Earth. It's implied that Chris held Hari at an emotional distance. Hari and her late mother-in-law also didn't get along, which added further strain to Hari and Chris's relationship. After one particularly nasty argument between Hari and Chris, Hari committed suicide. This new Hari is Chris's second chance, and he seems to develop a much deeper connection with her than to his original first wife. Over time, Hari develops more and more independence. She no longer needs to be around Chris constantly. She becomes her own person and is no longer just a replica of the original Hari built from Chris's memories. 
In the film, all members of the ship gather for a rather sad birthday party for Snout, and during philosophical debates and arguments, Sartorius brutally reminds Hari that she is not human. Affected and distressed by this, Hari later attempts to commit suicide by drinking liquid oxygen, but much to her dismay, she is spontaneously healed once again. Chris doesn't want her to die, he is happy with his newfound love and wants to live his life with Hari on the ship. However, the decision is taken out of his hands, as Hari succeeds in ending her life with the help of the other scientists and with the use of the Annihilator. The Ocean Solaris also stops sending any more visitors to the ship. Instead of these apparitions, the ocean starts creating islands on the ocean's surface. With no Hari, Chris has to decide how to move forward, and the film ends with him reuniting with his father. But there is something wrong about the scene. It's raining inside his father's house, and the pair don't even seem to notice. That is when the camera zooms out, and it's revealed that Chris may actually be on one of the islands that Solaris has created. Has Chris decided not to return to Earth, but to remain on Solaris? Themes explored in the film The Narcissism of Man Earth's frustrated reaction to not being able to understand Solaris leads them to want to abandon the pursuit of their exploration. A disillusioned snout says of mankind, we don't want to conquer space at all. We want to expand Earth endlessly. We don't want other worlds. We want a mirror. And this desire to see what we want to see is illustrated to a lesser degree by Chris's love for Hari. She begins as a reflection of his memories, of what he wants her to be, of what he remembers her to be, and not as she really was. Our limits and our place in the universe. Earth's failure to make any progress with Solaris throws into sharp focus our limits as a species. As communication with an entity so entirely alien proves to be futile, the film questions whether always being outward looking and the human tendency to believe in limitless possibilities because of our rapid technological advancements is realistic. And subsequently, if we are so limited, what is our ultimate place in the universe? Is Earth it? And is that so bad? Tarkovsky celebrates life, humanity and Earth through beautiful shots of nature. A key message in the film is that finding fulfillment meaning and our place in the universe can be achieved through the celebration of life and humanity over the use of cold, sterile and ultimately limiting science. The nature of identity and personhood. The film grapples with the question of what gives a person their identity. Hari struggles with the fact that she's a copy and not the original, but it is something that she comes to make peace with as she develops her own thoughts and comes to her own conclusions about how she wants to or does not want to exist. The nature of relationships. Solaris questions how much we know about the people we have relationships with. Do we love our partners, our children, our parents, based on who they actually are, or simply because of how we perceive them? Chris loves the Solaris Hari much more than the real Hari, and the Solaris Hari begins as nothing more than his memories of her. Chris's personal journey. The narrative of the film charts Chris's evolution from emotional deadness to a rediscovery of his humanity as he falls in love with Hari on the space station. He was cold and distant to Hari on Earth, but on the space station he openly shows his love for her. When Hari is gone, he returns to his father, wanting to reconnect. He is a changed man from the one we met at the start of the film. The nature of reality. The end of the film implies that Chris stays on Solaris on an island that replicates his home on Earth and he reunites with a created version of his father and not the real person. After his experiences on Solaris, is Chris content with his imagined version of reality rather than the real thing back on Earth? What is reality anyway? Can it not be what we need it to be? Style and Symbolism Tarkovsky is celebrated for his ability to use style and symbolism to tell a story. The slow pacing of Solaris is deliberate. Scenes such as the one where Burton drives through a city for almost five minutes introduces a trance-like meditative state in the viewer. This time is an opportunity to think about what is gone before, what we have seen and been told. Tarkovsky also goes between colour, sepia and almost black and white, and he does this for dramatic effect and to illustrate 
Chris's moods. Tarkovsky was famously suspicious of the use of color in films, but over time came round to the idea and used it to his advantage. Color became another tool to be used in his language of film. Solaris is also rich with symbolism, shots of weeds in water, a magnificent horse running past, and lengthy contemplations of paintings all illustrate the beauty of the world. And with that, I conclude my analysis and explanation of Solaris, a film hailed as one of the best examples of cinema in film history. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to London City Girl for more educational, informative and interesting videos from me.